On April 9, 1609, King Philip III of Spain signed an order which was one of the earliest examples of ethnic cleansing. At the height of the Spanish Inquisition, King Philip III ordered the expulsion of 300,000 Muslim Moriscos, which initiated one of the most brutal and tragic episodes in the history of Spain. Contrary to conventional wisdom, it was ancient Africans that brought civilization to Spain and large parts of Europe and not the other way around. The first civilization of Europe was established on the Greek island of Crete in 1700 BC and the Greeks were primarily civilized by the black Africans of the Nile Valley. The Greeks then passed on this acquired culture to the Romans who ultimately lost it, thus initiating the Dark Ages that lasted for five centuries. Civilization was once again reintroduced to Europe when another group of black Africans, the Moors, brought the Dark Ages to an end. When history is taught in the West, the period called the Middle Ages is generally referred to as the Dark Ages and depicted as the period during which civilization in general, including the arts and sciences, laid somewhat ID. This was certainly true for Europeans but not for Africans. Renowned historian Czech Anta Diop explains how during the Middle Ages, the great empires of the world were black empires and the educational and cultural centers of the world were predominantly African. After the collapse of the Roman Empire multitudes of white warring tribe from the Caucasus were pushed into Western Europe by the invading Huns. The Moors invaded Spanish shores in 711 AD and African Muslims literally civilized the white, white tribes from Caucasus. The Moors eventually ruled over Spain, Portugal, North Africa, and southern France for over 700 years. Although, generations of Spanish rulers have tried to expunge this era from historical record, recent archaeology and scholarship now sheds new light on how Moorish advances in mathematics, astronomy, art, and philosophy helped propel Europe out of the Dark Ages and into the Renaissance. One of the most famous British historians, Basil Davidson, noted that during the 8th century, there was no land more admired by its neighbors or more comfortable to live in than a rich African civilization which took shape in Spain. The Moors were unquestionably black and the 16th century English playwright William Shakespeare used the word Moor as a synonym for African. Education was universal in Muslim Spain, while in Christian Europe, 99% of the population was illiterate and even kings could neither read nor write. The Moors boosted a remarkably high literacy rate for a pre-modern society. During an era when Europe had only two universities, the Moors had 17. The founders of Oxford University were inspired to form the institution after visiting universities in Spain. According to the United Nations Education Body, the oldest university operating in the world today is the University of al Karun of Morocco, founded during the height of the Moorish Empire in 859 AD by a black woman named Patimo Afiri. In the realm of mathematics, the number zero, the Arabic numerals, and the decimal system were all introduced to Europe by Muslims assisting them to solve problems far more quickly and accurately and laying the foundation for the scientific revolution. The Moors scientific curiosity extended to flight and polymath. Ibn Finas made the world's first scientific attempt to fly in a controlled manner in 875 AD. Historical archives suggest that his attempt worked but his landing was somewhat less successful. Africans took to the skies some six centuries before the Italian Leonard da Vinci developed a hang glider. Clearly, the Moors helped to lift the general European populace out of the Dark Ages and paved the way for the Renaissance period. In fact, a large number of the traits on which modern Europe prided itself came to it from Muslim Spain, namely free trade, diplomacy, open borders, etiquette, advanced seafaring, research methods, and key advances in chemistry. At a time when the Moors built 600 public baths and the rulers lived in sumptuous palaces, the monarchs of Germany, France, and England convinced their subjects that cleanliness was a sin and European king dwelled in the big bands with no windows and no chimney, often with only a hole in the roof for the exit of smoke. In the 10th century, Cordoba was not just the capital of Moorish Spain but also the most important and modern city in Europe. Cordoba boosted a population of half a million and had street lightning, 50 hospitals with running water, 500 moxies, and 17 libraries, one of which held over 500,000 books. 
All of these achievements occurred at a time when London had a predominantly illiterate population of around 20,000 and had largely forgotten the technical advances of the Romans some 600 years before. Street lamps and paved streets did not appear in London or Paris until hundreds of years later. The Catholic Church forbade money lending, which severely hampered any effort at economic progress. Medieval Christian Europe was a miserable lot, which was rife with squalor, barbarism, and illiteracy. In Europe's great age of exploration, Spain and Portugal were the leaders in global seafaring. It was the Moorish advances in navigational technology, such as the astrolabe and sextant, as well as their improvements in cartography and shipbuilding, that paved the way for the age of exploration. Thus, the era of Western global dominance of the past half millennium originated from the African Moorish sailors of the Iberian Peninsula during the 1300s. Long before Spanish monarchs commissioned Columbus search for the land to the west, African Muslims, amongst others, had long since established significant contact with the Americas and left a lasting impression on native culture. One can only wonder how Columbus could have discovered America when a highly civilized and sophisticated people were watching him arrive from America's shores. An overwhelming body of new evidence is emerging which proves that Africans had frequently sailed across the Atlantic to the Americas many years before Columbus and indeed before Christ. Dr. Barry Fell of Harvard University alights an array of evidence of Muslims in America before Columbus from scriptures, oral traditions, coin, eyewitness reports, ancient artifacts, Arabic documents and inscriptions. The strongest evidence of African presence in America before Columbus comes from the pen of Columbus himself. In 1920, a renowned American historian and linguist Leo Werner of Harvard University in his book Africa and the Discovery of America explained how Columbus noted in his journal that Native Americans had confirmed that black-skinned people had come from the southeast in boat trading in gold-tipped spears. Muslim Spain not only collected and perpetuated the intellectual advances of ancient Egypt, Greece, and Roman civilization, also expanded on the civilization and made its own vital contributions in fields ranging from astronomy, pharmacology, maritime navigation, architecture, and law. The centuries-old impression given by some Western scholars that the African continent made little or no contributions to civilization and that its people are naturally primitive has unfortunately become the basis of racial prejudice, slavery, colonialism, and the ongoing economic oppression of Africa. If Africans rewrite their true history, they will reveal a glory that they will inevitably seek to recapture. Thank you all for tuning in. This has been Yemi Melikaya for Historica Africa. Until next time, cheers, have a good one.